Welcome pool fans joining us from around the world to the 25th annual Derby City. And if you've been looking for a match that's going to make you say, wow, that was a great shot. You have tuned in to the right one. This is the Diamond Bigfoot 10 Ball Challenge played on this beautiful diamond 5 by 10 super tight pockets and 16 of the best players on the planet. Are you guys ready for this next match? They're definitely ready, and I know you at home are as well. Features two great champions. First up, he is the China Open champion, Derby City Nine Ball champion, sponsored by Davini Q's and ATG Company from Davos City, Philippines, the Slayer, Lee Van Corteza. His opponent needs very little introduction. Five-time U.S. Open champion, the 2022 World Nine Ball champion, the 2023 World Eight Ball champion, and 17 member uh, years of Team USA. Sponsored by QTech, Rasson, and How, and VNEA Pool League, the South Dakota kid from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, USA, <laughs> Shane Van Boning. We're lagging for the break. Our referee is Ricky Bryant, sending it up to Scott Frost and Mark Wilson in the AccuStat Skybox. Hello and welcome, everybody. We have World Class 10 Ball up now, and here to provide expert analysis is Scott Frost. I'm Mark Wilson, and Scott, what should we look for in this one? Mark, how you doing? First off, I am excited. Shane Van Boning, previous winner. Lee Van Corteza, steady Eddie. He's consistent as any player out there. I don't know about the break considered. Shane Van Boning noted to have probably the best 10-ball break in the world. But it should be interesting, to say the least. Lee Van is, I'm assuming, a little guy. He has a little, kind of a little punch stroke, but super consistent. Always finishes top four here. And when I say always, I mean the majority of the times that he gets there. So this is uh, kind of the rabbit and the, uh, no, the tortoise and the hare match here. Yeah, absolutely, Mark. And, and Lee Van's very compact, and, and I think that's got a lot to do with his consistency, similar to an Alex Pagulain. I guess he might have a little bit more of a, a stroke to him there, but very compact and controlled. This is a race to 10, alternate the break format. 10 ball does not win on the break. Balls are racked randomly. No jump cues, that's probably the biggest change from most of the other tournaments here. And like Scott said, Van Boning, the defending champion. And there we see it, right? He's broken dry. He does use an open bridge, would I, which I don't typically see. Or did he make a ball mark? Yeah. I believe he's broken dry. Yeah. Okay. He, he uses that open bridge, and, and you don't typically see a lot of these guys doing that uh, anymore. But, but he gets away with it typically, I guess. But he didn't hear. Corey Duell broke with a mechanical bridge all night last night. Did he this. really? He did. He sure did. We ask him about it today. Shane plays the safety. And uh, he said that because his bridge height is the same every time. So well, leave some, it to Corey. Well, you know him. He's, he's a contrarian. He does not take anything at face value. He questions everything. He, he is a genius of pool, right? Corey Duell is, is a shout out to Corey Duell. He's a genius of pool. Nice control there by Shane. Quite a good hit. Able to take that with some velocity, you got separation. Correct, Mark, and I think he's got cover with the four. I know the one doesn't go, um, and it does pay to hit him. That's what they say. It pays to hit them, and I believe it's paid off here. Yes, yeah, uh, Shane will not be excited to try to play this one-four combination from this range. Might be forced to do it though, just because it's so hard to play safe. Nope, he was able to thread past the six ball with the cue ball. Great job there. I agree, Mark. I think he just played his percentages, knowing he's going to leave distance here. Does the one play off of the seven? It looks a little thick, but he's taking a look at it. He'd have to catch it quite thin, which might lay natural to come back up for the blue, too. Danny DiRoberto says this. Do not lose playing a phony safety. So if you don't have a lockdown safety, go down shooting because you might get the backdoor safety anyway. 
So he might shoot at this one, just like Scott said, off the seven. Caught it just a hair thin. Good job getting the cue ball back down table, though. Yes, it was. And I think he was more focused on the cue ball than he was actually pocketing the one. Obviously, he did want to get the one down, but he wanted to make sure that cue ball got up table because he's got cover behind the red three. SVB going to come two rails heavy behind the one. Well, he's caught it thinner than he wanted, Mark. For sure. Yeah, the table's still a little bit slippery, and he just didn't judge it as much. Uh, it didn't. It slipped a little bit more, and so he didn't get heavy like Scott suggested, where the cue ball would have stayed on that end rail. Does he rifle at the ten? <laughs> it, you know, it kind of comes down to this: if you don't see a lockdown safety, you might be able to stun the cue ball forward with that and still get uh, fortunate if you miss. Yeah, and I agree with that. I think shooting at the ten is asking a little too much. But you never know. Boy, I think he shot at it. With a, with an eye towards tucking the cue ball forward. Yes. You know, with, <laughs> he's laughing. Well, now he can just pin him to the eight ball. Just to stop and trickle the cue ball over if he doesn't want to play the two in the side. I agree. Yeah, stuck him real good, Mark. So, so both side rails have been taken away. Shane will have to kick off the end rail. Yeah, this is real distasteful. Yeah, and like Mark said, he's going to have to come off the end rail first, no matter what here. He cannot go to either side rail. If you were to evaluate, what would the likelihood of him hitting this two ball be? Man, it's he is definitely not a favorite, in my opinion. I would say he's probably a 70-30 dog. yeah. It, he's wanting or to more. warp into the end rail and arc it back out around the eight to get that two. And even if you hit it good, you can scratch off that two with this shot. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think you're right. I think that's probably the best shot. Yeah, the ten's in the way. The other thing is to think about taking an intentional foul, but there's nothing really he can do here with that either. So he's going to be for This is a pretty shot, though. Yeah, he's going to bend the cue ball. Don't want to overhit this, though. And he didn't. And he actually decelerated a little bit, Mark, and I think it took more than he expected. Sooner than he expected, right. for sure. If he hits it a little bit harder, it takes a little longer for that to grab. Exactly. <laughs> Lee Van rewarded with it. <laughs> when you hem up uh, Shane so bad that he hits the very first ball he encounters, you know that was a good safety right there. Absolutely. In defense to Shane, Lee Van did luck the one in, two rails on the side, but that's pool. Gotten a little steeper than he wanted here, I think, but he's fine. He can come out two rails, which whichever way he wants, whether he comes above the nine or stays below it. Does he come below the eight here, Mark, or does he stay out in the center? I think staying out in the center is probably safer, but he's got to get back down for yeah. the green six. He, he doesn't even have to, you know, but you're right. He'll be on the eight ball side of the five here. Oh, he came short. It's going to be okay. He can still maneuver the pocket. So he's fine here. I think he draws from this one rather than try to follow. To the side rail? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he goes all the way over and comes back out. And once it releases, then it's all good from there. You know, I say he's compact, and, and it's kind of, he, he is, but he is, and he's got a real nice fluid stroke. He's got a lot of power behind it as well. For some reason, something about his game tells me he's compact, but it just seems like it's probably because he's always in such good control with everything, his emotions, his demeanor, uh, his cue action. Mm-hmm. He's got oh my! He's got a ton of fight for this little body. Yes, you know, he, he does. There is no give up in Lee Van Corteza. forty-four years old from the Philippines. And as you mentioned, Mark, it always seems like he is deep in in just about any tournament he plays in. And you know he always runs deep in the ten ball, which is so peculiar because these guys never get to play on ten foot table. Yeah. 
I agree. I totally agree. I was actually going to mention that it seems like SVB just has that natural transition to the 10-foot table, whereas some of these other guys might struggle a little bit, but not Lee Van Corteza, as it looks like he's going to take game number one. Yeah, the Filipino players all have great attitudes. You never see them get emotional and upset and angry. They just they smile and they get ready for the next inning, and you just get a heck of a fight out of all of them. They respect the sport. They really do, and it's a huge advantage uh, for them. And, but it is it, it goes back to what you say. They respect the sport, and their lifestyle and the way they grew up forced them to respect the sport they didn't know any different so when they come over to the states it's like being at disneyland and uh we could definitely take something from that also when you when you give up uh like you, when you display anger as we get our first look at bam boning's break it emboldens your opponent like oh you're upset he's agitated okay i'm doing good <laughs> look at that both balls right behind the one found the side pocket something else Four balls on the break? What did he make? Three? He's made three at three. least, but wow, <laughs> yeah. what a hit. Everybody knows how to break, but nobody can hit the break like Shane Van Boning. No, and especially when it, when you've got a table like a 10-footer where he's really got room to get that cue ball back and kilt, and he kills it back here towards the head string, and it's absolutely astonishing. Anybody can try it. They can practice it all they want, but for somebody like Shane to do this over and over, it's amazing. He can play the 10 ball right here. It's a good call. I was wondering if you could go at it. Oh, he's made the one. He knew the 10 was there. He knew he could get after it with that shot. It's pretty flat here. Moving the 10 actually helped him get it on a three here because that 10 was up from the pocket, so it wouldn't have been an easy combination where now it's opened up the corner pocket if he wants to go there. It looks I'm like just, he's going forward, right, Mark? Yeah, you, you said it right. He was flat. Boy, he made the most out of that, though, to get this into the side pocket if he wants it, or he can go in the corner. I totally agree. He did make the most of that. Looks like he's going to go to the corner. Well, he went to the side. He fooled me. Not hard to do. <laughs> we were chatting yesterday, and <laughs> we were asking about fishing, and the twinkle in his eye and the smile that came across his face talking about his Lakers. And the, I couldn't think of anything worse than sitting out on a frozen lake. You know what I mean? I yeah, he loves fish. that ice fishing. and uh, oh, He can't talk me into it. I can promise you that. Well, Arizona boy ain't going to like no South Dakota No, cold. sir. He looks good, Mark. He does look good. Not that Lee Van doesn't. But, boy, that break is going to be tough to stop. Nice breaking run out there. His first inning here in the 10 ball event on the 10 foot table. <laughs> yeah, here's another thing. I was asking, you surely don't drive out on the ice because that always scares me. He goes, he did. He took his truck out there and the ice all broke under the tires and he had to get out with like an auger and open up oh, and then really? he had to get help to get oh, his really? truck out. So he says he never drives out on the ice anymore. <laughs> so I used to ice fish, Mark. As you know, I'm from Iowa and I used to ice fish a little bit, but you can be out there and you'll start hearing these cracks. It sounds like an earthquake, right? And, and it has not, doesn't have to have anything to do with you. It's very frightening. It's just a little bit too cold and a little bit too scary. <laughs> And it can also get quite boring. Yeah. I couldn't think of anything worse myself. Be cold and try to catch a fish I don't even want. But then again, Shane's his own animal, right? He does like to do things um, alone a lot of times. And I get it. I love to fish. I love to be alone. So more power to him. Just don't invite Mark and I. <laughs> okay. Here we go oh, again. No. Yeah, that's not what Lee Van wanted there at all. He cue ball had a little hop. He didn't quite get the ball action that Van Boning does. Mm, correct. And it went to the right a little bit, so he didn't hit him 100% square. But he definitely lacks power compared to SVB. And I'm not saying that power is key, 
but you got to hit them square. You know, physical fitness does make a difference because if you have to lunge to get the tip speed up there to a Shane, where Shane gets a little bit more effortlessly, so now he hits the cue ball just that little bit pure, which then in turn hits the head ball a little square, and then you get a little more, you know, so it's... And so what do you think about that, Mark? I mean, I do think when the break is a factor, I think height also might make a little difference. Is that true? Well, you get leverage with long arms, you get longer swing. Okay. You know, just like a, a fighter, you got a guy with a lot of reach. Sure. You, He's really eyeing this down. It might be a little funnier than we think. Okay, so he's he played the two. He was trying to control the secondary object ball, and he, he missed at that, but he had to use that pace to hold the line on the cue ball, so he was certainly mindful of it. Now he's just going to nick the one, go all the way down table. He'd like to use the three and ten here. I don't know that he got there, though. He's going to get the five, though. But I think there's a kick and stick here. Well, he's pretty well hooked. He can swerve and kick behind the one. Heavy, holding the cue ball. Just needs separation here, right, Mark? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's one thing that the 10-footer has is you can leave him long and it buys you something. For you amateurs, typically on this shot, you want to hit a little deeper than you think, like that. A lot of amateurs want to hit that thinner. They think they need to hit further up the rail versus further behind the ball. What a hit that was. It certainly was. These guys never know exactly where it's going to go. They know the percentages of what the yield can be, and so they just tilt that their way, and that's why Scott was saying when you go a little deeper in there, you get a little more stick on that thing, and this is a slippery table, so it doesn't bite like you're used to on a broken-in table. And that's an excellent point. Can he see a piece of this? Wow, what kind of eyes does he have? Overcut that ball. That range. He must have felt he could make it. I was looking down the pipe here on our great camera angle, and it looked like he could barely catch that ball. So I'm not surprised at this result. Big opportunity for the man at the table. Didn't want to be there for some reason. I don't think there's a problem. Yeah, I think he was thinking that, you know, if he, he got the inside angle here, the two cushion, the eight ball's kind of in the way, so he was, but he can maneuver around that anyway. Now, it's not going to be easy to go just two cushions right at the five, so he's going to have to contend with it, either try to go one rail, which I think he has too much angle to go one rail now, especially with it being slippery. Yeah, so does he go, go two rails tight below the eight and swing around? I don't know. I, a lot of times, I think you go long here. You just you play two rails, but you just settle for getting to the head string and just play the five. Don't even try to get closer like you would if the eight wasn't there, like this. This is exactly what I was saying. Yeah. I, I didn't mean swing all the way around, but come below the eight, right? right. And Correct. Just take a longer shot. Don't try to get gin, where you just got a stop shot from you know two feet away. It wasn't laying right. Yep, I agree. And it, it actually looked to be laying quite perfect. Mm hmm. Yeah, he made the most of his shot for sure. Like you say, you can just stun right here, a little stop shot. Perfect. He's a great manager of the balls and his position routes because of the 15-ball rotation background where you have to thread through so much junk and, and accept longer shots, but you try to get on angle. Very good point, and you can see that in his cue ball. He wants that to stop, and that's perfect. He wants to carry an angle on this eight. Does not want to be flat. Perfect. Just a little bit of high right. Just to hold the line, then want that cue ball to drip forward. Speed's good. Now it lays real easy, come around two cushions for the side pocket. You can go soft speed, but then you kind of got a small window for uh, accuracy on this. 
Yeah, I like your shot, Mark. You just let it out. You really can't go wrong coming around for the side. Wow, he went into it a lot deeper than he should have. You agree, right? He was playing for that, but he still went deeper than he should have because he was pointing downward. He wanted to come off that third rail, so mm -hmm. he didn't have it. the cue ball settle on the rail. And on the 5x10, this shot playing from the rail is a lot tougher shot than you might imagine. I imagine. And, compo and compared to the 9-footer. Sure, of course. So smooth out there. 2-1 to one is our score. And you know, the, the 5 by 10, 50 square feet, 4.5 by 9, 40.5 square feet. So you say, 25% mm, larger, but 35% more difficult because it's got everything is longer. And everything, so routine shots here are not routine and they're very missable. So that's where those angles really come in. And it's actually very intimidating when you, when you get to the table, and especially if you have pressure on you. I've played uh, on a 10 footer it, it, with, a, with a couple of high level players, and it's a different ball game. Yeah, you, when you look down there, it looks like the uh, flight deck of an aircraft carrier. It Sometimes sure does. If you're dogging it a little bit. If you're dogging it, it might look like, uh, yeah, something a little more than an aircraft carrier. <laughs> look at this break. And once again, a couple balls down. He did not get blessed with the shot, but you can just see his break efficiency is going to be tremendous. It is, but you can have those matches, right, Mark, where things just lay a little bit funny. And... Uh, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. He might be forced to push here, and that's what he's going to do. When you push out, you roll it out. Your opponent has the option to come back and shoot. If he doesn't like it, SVB would have to come back to the table. It's a funny dynamic, too, because when you're forced to play this shot, it plays easier than if you accept it and have to play it yourself. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's a psychological thing. Hmm. So it's hard to make yourself go on the iffy circumstances, but with the other opponent put you back in, you think, well, I got a chance here. That's a really good point, though, and that's a real factor in the push out play. I think Lee Van would like to overcut this and come down, but the nine ball, so he's going to pass it. And you hate to lose trying to play safe from here. You really do, and you, you've got to think that SVB is going to try and stay aggressive in this point, right? Well, they, I mean, I'm not sure what he was planning on, but yeah, if he, you know, he's got the stroke power. He can warp drive the two ball, the cue ball arcs out around the 10, two yeah. cushions back towards the three. Correct. And even if you get below the three, whatever the case may be, but it looks like he might be playing defense. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I can tell. Oh, what a nice shot that was. Well thought out. Absolutely. And Lee Van doesn't miss many of those tricks, but I think if he would have thought about that, I think he would have played himself. Agreed, and he did leave an edge of the two. But uh, like Mark said, at that distance, being on the rail to make full contact like that and use cover is not easy. It's a little tricky. Definitely a little tricky here. You can almost see the whole ball, Mark, but I don't know that that really means much. Mm -mm. No, there's nothing easy about this because you got to control the cue ball and the object ball, which and there's so many things that can go wrong. Double kiss, hit the three, hit the five. He just went out for the bank and, you know, just used distance. And he pointed at the cue ball. He used what we call high karate. Uh, he used a little extreme high English to kill the cue ball up top. It acts almost like a low English so he knew he was going to get distance there. And the problem is that the eight ball is going to slow that three down, even if he does get this deuce low. Well, he might double bank this, too, and just set it on the end rail underneath the 10. And I let like the it. ball come back down table. Let's see. Yeah. I like okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Now, that's the best play from there, but you still have to hit it super accurate. I mean, you've got to be a good player to make that shot right there because it looked like it just goes there, but you've got to hit that two ball perfect to make that happen speed wise. But now he keeps Lee Van, he, and Shane didn't try to force something that wasn't there, and keeps Lee Van on the defensive. Yes, it does. If this was a boxing match, this is like hitting the guy in the ribs or something early in the fight, and it takes a toll later on because he's got to be precise about this. You can't just cobble at it. Oh, 100%, Mark. It wears you down over time. And, and note that the five is hampering him from any type of swerve to the back of the two. He's going to have to go two rails. Nice, wow. nice. He had to warp that and look at the speed that he chose. He had the right amount of backspin. 
Now here's a shot. If Shane plays it, he has to go soft, and he's playing to nothing. You know, so you can lose with Shane's shot. Very difficult to win from here. Yeah, and what Mark means is that the eight is pretty much covering the three up. Not that he can can't play the three eight, but boy, you really hate to shoot a shot knowing that if you make it, you might not really have anything following that. <laughs> so he didn't even shoot it, and we understand why. Once again, overcutting another body blow here <laughs> early in the fight. I do believe he's got a full ball here. He might have the window, Mark. He could use the eight or the three now. Well, look at that camera angle. He's going to have to swerve a little if he wants to catch the right side of the two, I believe. Yeah. He hit it square. He couldn't hit it. He, That's just what you said. The, yeah, he tried he to swerve it. He didn't give it the time. He wanted to use speed so it didn't spin. It didn't hook as soon as it needed to. But we could go back to all the defensive plays F SPV's made, and it's possibly already showing some type of a side effect to leave in. Tell you what, Mark, and you know this, SVB is a world-class one-pocket player, and I do think in this setting, with a table such as this, with so many open areas, that one-pocket experience is massive. Mm -hmm. Because you can see some things that other players don't see, and he's so good with the cue ball. Okay, well, Shane's finally earned his way to the table with a decent opening here where he can do some damage. Look at it, stunning uh, thickly into the eight to stop the cue ball there for the three next. Yeah, he just doesn't want the eight to catch the three. Hmm. Wow. So far, it's been a little funny for Van Moaning. He's got a little shake of the head. Mm -hmm. Like, um, is this really happening? But we all know how good he is at getting past that. This might be a little light-handed. And it definitely was. And now, Lee Van has cover, Mark, if he'd like to go up towards the eight with the cue ball. Otherwise, he could thin off of it Yeah. on the right side and come around. Amateur players say, what are you worried about? And pros are saying, because I gave up control of the table, he may be able to get, pin me up here. Absolutely. These are the exchanges that win and lose games at the pro level. It's not how many, you know, when you look at the shot making difference between Shane Van Boning and Lee Van Corteza, it's negligible. That's not going to very dictate. negligible. It's not going to dictate who wins, but absolutely. it's who gets the first shot here. That's the big deal. That's right. That's absolutely right. And that was a great shot by Lee Van. And Lee Van's going to earn a reward from that great shot. Forced Shane to kick, but didn't have the control that he would have liked. And if Lee Van gets out here, yes, it's only three to one, but the score doesn't seem to reflect the play. But at the same time. It is what it is, and Lee Van taking advantage. If he gets out here, he's sending a message. And things can change real quick. Like, this could set the pace. It could set the vibe. Shane might mm -hmm. get a little negative. Yeah, I know he's a world champion, but it happens to everyone. They're human. Oh, nice stroke. Maybe. Well, that was. He got a lot out of that with pretty effortless uh, flick of his stroke there. Maybe even overran it a little bit, which he would have probably didn't want to come up short, so maybe he even defaulted towards going a little strong. Yeah, he, he didn't seem to hit that hard, and it just kept going. He put a great stroke on it, like you said. This isn't easy to the corner. Oh, not at all, no. But also a ball you need to get if you're going to beat Shane Van Boning. Overcut it by quite a bit. Yeah, but that was caused by trying to make sure you got two cushions rather than one. 
get on across. He was trying to overcook it. And stay to the low side of the five. So that's that's exactly right. And now you've got to wonder. I mean, he's got a big nine ball that he could play the cue ball behind, right? And that's what he's looking at, I believe. I thought he was looking at trying to go two cushions off the back of the nine down table to bring it towards the five. But if he's shooting, he's going off the back side of the nine. If not, then he's tucking it. He's tucking it. Yeah, he's got a big ball there to get behind. Oh, good hit. Good speed. This is the beauty of accuracy on the four ball is your speed control is good. If you hit the four ball a little funny, your speed control easily gets away from you. And so it's deceptive. looks like the ball Very just deceptive. goes there, but it doesn't. Yeah, he's kind of got him cut off here, Mark. Like, really might have him cut off yeah. here. He might have to. I don't think he can go below the 10-1 rail to the back of the four. This could be big problems. It is. Uh, here on the overhead, you can really see how much he has him cut off. Uh, it, he's going to have to manufacture an angle that's not natural. Yeah, he, yeah he He's might. thinking about two cushions here. Sensitive. And we're playing all ball fouls. He's got to be careful. Wow, what, what a, a great hit. shot. Makes me want to clap. Absolutely. What a good hit, no matter what he sells out or doesn't. No Fantastic doubt. play. For sure. I mean, hmm. very little room for error oh, there. Wow. Shane's got a little grin on his face. He made a heck of a shot He there. sure did. And that's what Lee Van Corteza does. He is a warrior. Oh. Hard to tell whether he has it or not. I don't think he does. I don't think he does either. Uh, Shane grimaced like maybe he does, so I don't know. Well, yeah, Lee Van acting. Yeah, like he's he does. queuing up level Q like there's no problem here. Oh, wow. You can see just <laughs> enough of it. He had to use the far side of the pocket, but he did so easily. Pretty steep here. I think he can go to the side rail below, or excuse me, above the side and warp back over to play the six in the lower right. He might even be able to come below it, Mark. I, I think your shot is right. I think he because when he, well, maybe not. It's, here on the overhead, it looks different than it does from my vantage point on the table. So I'll default. Whatever he does is I'm good with it. Okay. Oh, wow. He did go below it. Oh, gorgeous. Just yeah. a hint the wrong angle, though. <laughs> the, yeah. The last six inches hurt. Hurt pretty badly, too. I don't know if the 10 is a problem here. Can he miss the 10 and come two rails out? He's got to elevate, which makes that side pocket tough. He might even bank. He may end up, or maybe just play safe here. He may not go all out. You hate to give up an offensive chance, but. Well, he is. Is he cutting this in the corner, or is he going behind the 8? He's cutting it, and he successfully cut it in beautifully. Wow. <laughs> Cortez are looking to take a three to one lead. I think he is not made a single ball on the break, and Shane's made probably around seven. <laughs> yeah. A couple of breaks. He's only at, well, I know he made two, and then maybe the first track he made three, or two or three, from both breaks for sure. I've got to be careful what I say. This is AccuStats, where they literally can count every ball, where the percentages are perfect. Shout out to Pat Fleming, the innovator. And I must say real quick, Mark, Derek, your son, he, mm -hmm. he does an amazing job. I did not know that was your son until I stepped in this booth tonight. Yeah. Well, he's my stepson. Good enough. But he's talented. <laughs> He's taught me a lot, broadcast-wise, you know, stuff. He seems very sharp. Well, 17 years on the radio didn't hurt. Going to be interesting to see how SVB holds up mentally. Yeah, he's been here before, so no doubt about that. But also, he didn't want the match to start off like this against a tough guy like Corteza. So. No, 100% he's been here before, but he and he definitely doesn't seem well. Now, I, I do know him quite well, and, I mean, he doesn't show it too often, but when we get older, things tend to get to us a little easier. His body language definitely is pretty evident a lot of times with Shane. He, yes. He, you kind of know he's not happy about something. 
Not that it really affects him, but to your point earlier, when you have a body language that bleeds negativity, the opponent will feed off of it. Does he make any adjustment here, Mark? I would think you want to make some type of an adjustment. But he's going back to the same place. <laughs> Just what you said, open bridge always with him. <laughs> he's... Now they're saying you have to have the whole cue ball behind the line. Ricky Bryan asking him to move it back slightly. Well, that might help him. I think he needs to move it more than that. Get something to change on this break. Well, Six he's put eight. something. He put a little more behind that when he got the one down. Here Look at how much movement was on the 10. You know, you don't see that that much with the Accurac. Although this tournament, we have been seeing the 10 ball move around a little bit. It does not win on the break, though. We didn't mention that already. Yeah, and he got a nice pop on that. He caught the pro side of the one, which makes better contact, allows these object balls to do their job. And the deuce is laying good. Oh, super layout here. Well, I actually like the way he played that, Mark. I would have considered drawing back a little, taking the two-rail angle on the three, but he played it the simple route, and this is actually probably on a 10-foot table more natural. The Z zigbag yeah. Yeah, back he and forth. He got a lot accomplished with that first shot. He doesn't want to get flat here. Yeah, he's pretty flat. Not impossible, but he can. he's going to have to use some power now. Yeah, and he's going to have to settle for some distance, in my opinion. He might even have to go rail first, just catch it a fraction rail first, Mark. Yeah. It's tricky. If he, if he go the rail first, then you can go softer and hit the pocket a little rough. And like, well, he, he hit power in rail first. So yeah. That was worse than we thought. Yeah, it was real quick in the backswing, in my opinion, as well. No, when he misses, that's exactly what happens. He tries to generate power with the speed on the transition. It just kills him. Yeah, it looked to me like everything kind of fell apart there. I understand he was trying to generate power, but he was real quick in the backswing. Yeah, when you have the short, compact swing, and that's what happens. Where Shane has the flowing power, he gets it pretty easily and effortlessly. Uh, Lee Van tries to get it with an abrupt transition. Looks like he's going to go at this. <laughs> Pure uh, fighter mentality right there. He did not give up mental toughness. Just buck up and make a good shot. And that was a big shot. Due to the position of these balls, he gets on the eight. And I'd like to predict... He's got a four to one lead. Kind of what I was mentioning earlier, Mark. I mean, even though Shane's got a great break on him, sometimes things can go against you. Mm -hmm. And it just seems like it's one of those matches so far. Nicely done. Do you know Phil Wyndham? Oh, I love Phil. I've he's been just around him entered forever. the arena. There's this, he's got his little sack of high-end cigars with him, too. Great guy. He <laughs> yeah. loves pool. Done a lot for it. Character. He loves one pocket. He doesn't go to pool tournaments. They don't have a one pocket event with it. Yes, he loves <laughs> one pocket. He knows more about the players than, <laughs> than the players. Yeah, he's a smart man. <laughs> he, he studies it. He buys every stream. He's telling me things about like, obscure things I don't even know. I live it every day. But He's got to draw back here. Not a problem. Lee Van Cortez is showing why he's still in this event. Pure. Well, four to one. A lot of pool left. A lot of pool left. Six. 
you know, with this format, Mark, you don't want to get too far behind with the alternate break format. Oh, no. And, you know, it's one of these things. Shane's been here many times. But Lee Van, you know, he's got momentum on his side. He's feeling good. He's feeling like he, he, well, Lee Van knows he can win. There's no question about that. The one does drop. That's the beauty of Shane's break. They don't have to go right where they're supposed to go. He can make something happen down table. But a big problem, I believe, with the blue, too, unless it goes. Well, I don't know. It doesn't look like it to me. It looks like it's gone too far past the side. You hate to kick at this ball, but sometimes you want to just because the push-out's awkward. He's going to go super soft. Delicate I'm surprised shot. at this shot here. Yeah. Risky. Well, here's why, Mark. Because even if he rolls up onto the two, you're going to leave Lee Van close to it to where he can tick you off of it and leave you distance at minimum. Yeah. Maybe play a controlled safety that really hurts you. So I'm really surprised at that, especially with a push option. I thought he might kick two rails at it. But uh, anyway, he's left a shot. It's not an easy shot. and You can double kiss with this, but you can also score it. Now, do you see the speed that he used? When it rubs the rail at that speed, it'll bounce away. If he goes just a little stronger speed, that was not available because he was too close to it. He makes that ball even with that hit. Absolutely, but it also looked to me, Mark, like he used a touch of inside English, which turned the two ball towards the rail. I'm a little bit surprised there. I'd love to see it again. I know we're not going to get to, but... We I, might. We, sometimes we get the replay if we ask for felt like he turned that with a little inside. I don't know that he meant to. He was stretching. It's neither here nor there. SVB needs this opportunity, and he has come up short here. Yeah, and then we get a little look at his firepower. He does have a big pocket in the lower left. I think you're going to have to play for the beard on the eight here off the four if you're going to play the three past the eight. I don't think you have the ability to get the cue ball close or else maybe play for the bank on the four. Sometimes the bank's better than trying to control the four ball billiard in the eight, so we'll see. Oh, he's playing it off the eight in an effort to try. Yeah, he didn't want to kick the four down table, so he's disappointed. He was trying to dislodge the eight so he could play the four cleanly. And then when he hit that, so a heady play. And even though he's played some great defensive shots, he's been on the losing end of this battle, so it f almost feels like he doesn't want to do that. He's a world-class player. He's forced to do that. <laughs> Shane's doing really well on moving these secondary object balls with proper speeds and getting the result. He was able to get the seven ball in play. I think he can still hit the edge of the four okay, but I'm just saying it's in no, the I end agree. rail. Absolutely, yeah. Mark. I totally agree. Yeah. He's going to have to kick at this. He's going to try and hit the back side of the four, two rails deep behind the four, hold the cue ball. But, boy, Lee Van kicks so well. I don't want to jinx him, and that's typically what commentators do. But, man, he's shown me how good he kicks tonight. Mm -hmm. The six is a problem. Possibly to the seven. Well, he got the four out here where it's just thin enough that you got to do some work here. He needs to get this down. He did. He did about as good as he could there, Mark. And he chose that speed because it lent itself to the accuracy. He wanted to make sure, even if he didn't have a good play, he can defend himself from here. But if you miss the ball, you can't defend yourself. So he probably doesn't like this thin of a hit for control. But the fact of the matter is he's still at the table. He definitely doesn't like it. His body language showed something real negative. Inside spin, soft speed, no straight, no a little bit inside. And this is it. And so he had to settle for this, but he could still defend himself. And that's the virtue of not missing balls. I agree. That being said, I think he wanted to go further and play the six up in the same corner. He just didn't quite get there. But to your point, he wanted to cinch the five first, which is most important, like my Mark said. I just don't know how long he wants to play this game of cat and mouse because Lee Van seems to keep coming with it. Mm-hmm. 
and he doesn't want to leave him too many opportunities at the table either. No, when you play a tactical game against Lee Van, he's going to hold his own for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. And Shane wants to get the fast break offense going, breaking yes. around like he's opened up here. But he has, he's kind of been hampered. He's, every time he comes to the table, some ugly thing where he's rolling or safety. Looks like he's considering. Trying to get to the eight. I'm a little surprised about this play. Well, no, because he, he, th he would like to get to the eight, but he wanted to for sure get the six on the end rail. Yeah, yeah I just thought he could use the nine and ten as well and catch it thinner and bank it one rail up. But but I understand. Yeah, I, I think what happened was he was a hair thin and he, the okay. speed wasn't going to lend itself. But yeah, I, th I thought that too. But I think he felt more comfortable getting the six on the end rail here this way. Seems to me like he's shooting at this. Inside spin, kind of jumped up out of his shoes, but he's always had a little body movement. <laughs> um, but yeah. a lot of players do, and if it works for you, go ahead. Doesn't work for me. I can well, tell you that. Well, it's they've just overcome it with hours. It's still not right because when you have extraneous motion in there, it lends itself to inconsistency. If it helps something. Jerry Bryseth to tell you to do it. Shout out to Jerry Bryseth, such as yourself, great teacher. Oh, he won the goal just another inch. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe he got there, did he? At least not the full ball. All right. He got distance on him, though. That slows things down on the 10 footer for sure. No, and you continue to preach that, and I fully agree. He's going to go again. Top right corner. If he happens to miss, he can get distance. Yeah. Watch uh -oh. the cue ball. Uh -oh. Big trouble. Uh oh. Woo. <laughs> he so didn't want it to be that close. So far, this is the story mm -hmm. of the match. Yeah, there's a psychological toll that happens to you when you go through, you know, six, seven innings consecutive. The guy missed and almost crashed and left me bad, you know. You have to have some pretty good mental toughness. Isn't that the truth? What has he got here, Mark? I guess he's kicking behind it. I don't know. Oh, he can edge it. Boy. Yeah. He's not happy with it, but Definitely it's not, not terrible. Happy. Looks like he can thin cut it in. I'm not, I'm not suggesting it's easy. I'm just saying it looks like it might be makeable. Agreed, and he can. And he's, I think, 100% so far for this shot. He's made a couple tough ones mm -hmm. like this. You're right. Look how long that bridge is. He's going to go with a little inside spin to take the side pocket out of play. So if he misses it, he'll overcut it. Overcut well, it, he did. You called it, and this is just what the doctor ordered for SVB, even though it's only four balls. They're an important four balls, especially for the confidence. Oh, couldn't hit it any better. Right on the button. Okay, good. It is an alternate break format, correct? So I believe SVB broke this rack. Well, it is the format. Let's see. Lee Van, yeah, it would have been SVB's break because Lee Van won the opening lag. So. And 42 is our score. And Moon retaliates here. Had a couple good tactical racks, so we had a little something to talk about. Yeah, there's no doubt it's not just been straightforward, which is nice for everybody. The look of, I don't know what, on Shane Van Boning, but it is a look, and he has, uh, he has some looks. Bigfoot 10-ball challenge. 
I measured the pockets this morning. Four and a quarter inches here. Oh, they are four and a quarter. Okay, well, that makes a big difference. I was told four and a difference. half, but I, uh, I went down there myself, and uh, I got an app on my phone, four and a quarter, and then I put two balls up there, which has four and a half and not even close. So, <laughs> Wow, well, yeah. that makes a difference. I mean, you, you add in the distance and then four and a quarter. This makes a big difference, and the table's got some play on it. You can tell. Mm -hmm. So the cloth isn't brand, brand new. What's the eight going to do? The one is down. Will the two dress up? The five is down. Now I see why he's breaking from there, Mark. <laughs> I retract everything I said prior. First time all week we've seen the ball, the eight ball go four rails. They've always been coming along because the cloth was a little uh, skittish, mm -hmm. slippery. And there the eight ball went all the way around. Last match we noticed it was starting to get close. So it's starting to bite. Hmm. Boy, this isn't fun to have to play safe from here after you just make three balls on the break. Agreed. you would like to get uh, more out of that cue no, ball. No good. Yeah, he was trying to wrap tight in behind the four. It's like a low drag shot with a lot of left English. Caught the two too thick. Big shot here. Oh, clean. Golly, what a shot. Don't punish him. Okay. I was scared to death. He was going to tuck up on the six. Yeah, he makes it look so easy, but that shot by no means was easy. I think he can control both balls here. I, I think he might be playing both balls, in fact. Well, he's missed them both as well. He's yeah. overcut the three, therefore overcut the four. Like you said, Mark, I, I believe you're right. I think they both played, both laid natural. Hmm. He's not thrilled with that, mm -mm. is he? No, you don't want to leave Van coming to the table with open looks like this with no. four or five balls left. Yeah, I like that play, smart play, just to make sure you're out and clear from everything. Did you ever play in the Philippines, Scott? You know, no. I was just talking to a woman over there who is a digital creator, but she's been around forever. I had a match with Efren in a stadium, and it was going to be a great, great thing, and it fell through, and it didn't fall through on my end. But to answer your question, I have not. Well, it's a different life over there, and boy, is there some pool players. Yeah, and I think like everybody else, Mark, I've researched it a bunch. I know a lot about it in talking with Bustamante and a little bit with Efren's manager. And it's a special place. You, you likely think I'm exaggerating, but there's a ton of guys you'll never hear of that play near yes. Lee Van Speed. Yes. They, they will never come, but they play this tough. Yeah, well, I hear there's a couple guys giving Orcolo a ball or two now, and it's just, that's like mind-boggling. <laughs> it is. I see kids giving Efren weight, which is hard to believe. Yeah. That was a big game there for Van Boney. Lost control, overcut the three. Yeah, it negated the good work he did in the rack before <laughs> to battle back. Uh, Lee Van's a tough man. He is, and you've said it. He's a fighter, and he really is. I, I get that same feeling from Lee Van always. And off of the table, he is a funny guy. He's a very uh -huh. personable guy. I like him a lot. They grew up in such harsh conditions and have the happiest disposition. They're singing karaoke and stuff. Anybody else in the world be complaining about their lot in life? <laughs> the whistling? No laughing. doubt. No doubt. All right, Shane like to get on track here on the break. He's playing a 758 clip, it does not seem like he's been ineffective, but somehow he's made a few mistakes, I guess. He needs that three to drop. Oh, it didn't. I thought it was going to drop all the way. Well, there, wow. are, there is some trouble on the table. I don't know if the eight plays. 
Ricky going to take care of that right now with the Accurac. Hmm. Yeah, the replay on the break. And boy, he had ball action everywhere, but they just they all kissed into each other and didn't find the pocket. A lot of times they kiss into a pocket. Every year I come here and there's people that speak to me and oh, I cannot remember their names or something. Uh, I mean, it's it's I just, tough. Hey, I just honest. Look, I'm sorry. What's your name? I forgot. I, I think mean, that's the best. I I totally agree. I understand, Mark. I mean, it, it's not easy to remember all these people. Well, he's got that real thick and a lot of body movement. And still awkward for Shane every time. He, it, this is better than what he's been getting, but I'm just saying it's awkward. There's nothing here where you can really get dug in on and say, okay, I'm going to make a couple balls here and get some rhythm. I have to come with a big shot here. He's caught it. Got it. Oh, did he? Okay, he's okay. That, that was a good rub. Yeah, maybe. real good. And the more I look at it, I do believe the eight plays if he gets to it. I'll tell you what, it's not a nine-footer. When you're reaching, you are reaching. Oh, clean. It's a good sign for Shane. Now, this is a tricky one here when it's this deep. At least he's only half table away, but you may have to draw up out of here. It's that ugly. Agreed. I think you come to the top side of the four, somewhere out where the QL is now, ideally. But like Mark said, it's definitely tricky to hit the right side of this three. And that's okay, right? That's fantastic. <laughs> but I'm just saying you have to make a big stroke where a lot of times you can just kind of use the rails and not rely on a big draw stroke to get up out of there. Five in the same corner. Well, he's fallen a little bit above the five. I think he could, he could possibly stop or draw one rail out. Well, I think stop because you don't want to spend time in no man's land. And Buddy Hall says, "Listen, don't play position when you have position. I mean, just stop your rock oh, and have it." You absolutely, know. he was straight. I thought he had a little more angle. Oh, I see. Yeah. But now he's a little straight on this to stun back out one rail, so. Well, he's hitting them clean. <laughs> and that was a high velocity shot to just get that little bit. And now he's falling straight again where he has to go into the narrow position zone, you know, so he doesn't like that, of course. Yeah, and what Mark means is he's drawing, if he's drawing, he's drawn back to a fine area, and it's real touchy. You can overdraw it or underdraw it. So this is real touchy. And either way, you don't get out, underdraw or overdraw. Well. Okay. He wanted to let it go. Now he got to the big position zone, so he, he knew the reward. The other thing was only going to be about six or eight inches he had to get to. Here he had about three or four feet. Now just get away from the 10. You don't have to do anything big here. Well, he doesn't want to fall flat on the 9 either. Yeah, he's trying to do something more. Well, he definitely did something more. He's gotten perfect. <laughs> yeah. I think you just come down the long rail, don't you? you just you stun. You hit the rail a little left English and just let the spin catch. I'm going to do whatever he does. Yeah. Oh, no. He did this way. Okay. He was oh. pretty quick there. Whew. Okay. Almost uncomfortably quick, it seemed like. Now don't let up here. Okay. Now that was good coaching right there when I told him. It, <laughs> it sure was. So the way me and Shane play on the course, you know. Yeah. I love it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know. I love watching him play. I, oh, as yeah. the Moscow Cup captain, and he'd be out there under those pressure situations, and like, "Come on, big hoss, you got this." And he'd just come through and come through. And it's so demanding, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's just so demanding the the pressure that he carries uh, mm -hmm. in, in that event alone. 
In the expectations, I don't know that he gets too caught up in the expectations, right? Where other top players who've done great, such as, let's say, Francisco Ruiz, right? He, mm-hmm. had, he had that record year. Um, it, you get these expectations in your mind, and you feel it from the audience over time, and it will build some type of pressure. I don't know that Shane gets that in the normal world, but in the Moscone Cup, mm-hmm. I believe he gets it. Yeah, I think he doesn't want to let anybody down. And then everybody yes. criticizes him, and then it compounds. And he tries to do more, and then he's exactly. frustrated. It's a, yes, it's, it's tough. A, kind of ugly. It's almost no matter, a no-win situation, right? No matter how you talk about it, we've talked about it. Yeah, there's so really it no answer. There. You know, this is a Moscone Cup points nine sure ball is, event. The nine I, ball. I was thinking that I'd probably see Ruiz and Al here. Uh, just, I would bet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I would bet. Well, this is tricky, Mark. Huh. Yeah, what's, what's he going to play the? Here? Is he, he pushed out. Is he going to play the one, two rails towards the center of the table and bring the cue ball down towards the nine? That's what he's looking at. You got to be careful you don't clip that two. Okay, he took that completely out. Oh, I that love was it. His speed, boy, dandy shot, great shot. He's going to get the gap. Can he use the? Or is he going to get the gap? Does the seven have him? Do you see how much, you know, when you play as much as Shane, do you see those little hits like that? They're real sensitive. That's as hard as making a long straight in shot right there, what he just did. Absolutely. And, and boy, he's just been hitting them a spot on every time. And then here, you know. Oh, look at this. Now he's earned a chance. No. <laughs> Is that misfortune or did he leave a shot he, on the two here? He might be able to. It's not fun to play this billiard, but uh, I think that's still... I think you have to play it. I wouldn't be surprised if he banked it straight back. No, he can play the carom, like you said. Oh, that was gorgeous. Perfect speed to control the one. Because there's no sense making it without any control. You, you'd be better off to play what you said and bank and save or... Yeah, because the bank leaves distance if you don't make it. but And you could slide under the three... He doesn't seem to like this. I guess he doesn't want to roll it, so he's got to come out below the five and above. Oh, he's going to take the short route. Oh, now he's falling on the rail, Mark. And you can see that the speed was wrong to hold it for the three, and then he, he couldn't. It was going to be too wide to get out there. Then, so it was, this was his best option was to just settle for this. Every rack has been like pulling teeth. He never gets right where he can just get, you know. It's it just, really has. Tough. Yeah, it's really been awkward. Is he going to hold here? Or is he going to try and go up and down? Okay, got the unfortunate rub. <laughs> Every rack. Every He's rack. Gets something weird like this. Can he billiard the nine Does here? the nine play? But where does the four go? He's going to have to hit it with a little pace, right? Oh, for sure. If it does play. I believe it does. Looks pretty good. I hate to be that guy that's not at the table saying it's something looks good. And when you're at the table, it might look completely different. But it really right. does look good with this camera angle. He might even be able to hit it with a high left where the cue ball is actually going out towards the four. And that's what he's done. Oh, good shot. Good shot. Good control. Even if he doesn't come up with a shot, if you play at that speed where you're likely to get a shot, that's all you can do. You don't know exactly where that four ball is going to end up because the micron that you hit it on changes it quite a bit. <laughs> Shane pounces his head up and down like, come on, you did a lot of good work. Finish this thing off. Yeah, he's falling a little straighter than he wanted, so he's going to punch real hard. He got the most out of it, and that's what he does. He and Skyler Woodward, in my opinion, are the best ever at that shot where you're flat and you've got a punch. With Shane's fitness level, though, he's a little bit stronger, so he gets that accurate cueing with that power better than the rest of them. Uh, he's just, you, you can see that he gets places the other guys don't get to. He's over the 10. Yeah, <laughs> this is how pool is. He said, my goodness, it's been like this the whole match. It doesn't take much to change that. Now 
nice shot. Looked easy. It was not. Within one. Man, good fighting here. I love the tenacity of this. He, he had the gut one out there. Agreed. He, I bet he had to make four or five iffy circumstances there that uh, could go either way and haven't been going his way thus far. Yeah, and he's been on the losing end of these scratchy games. You can see the AccuStats averages. They are fairly close. I mean, you could almost call it dead even right now. 8-6-8 eight, eight versus 8-4-6. Eight, and that all leads to those grind games that they've played. And that's a big momentum changer for SVB to win one of those games, like Mark just said. It does a lot for the mm -hmm. mental psyche. Right. He hasn't been getting those games, and he definitely needs to get them. Capacity crowd here tonight. I believe he switched the break side. And he has dropped the eight. Got a great kiss. The cue ball was scratching there, Mark. So he's got a, a good kiss, and he's got a shot and an angle to carry towards the two. We, we oftentimes complain about getting kissed in, but we don't say much about getting kissed out. Kissed out. <laughs> <laughs> right? No doubt. It does happen both ways now. It's yes, like, sir. We don't remember those, though. I always get frustrated like, you got to be kidding me. But there's definitely times I've had that fortuitous thing happen. Well, I guess he just cinched the one. He's going to take the cut on the two. Oh, yeah. He's feeling great right now. It's a big shot here, though. Everything leads to each other if he gets this down. The three and four are up table near each other. The five and six near each other. He's got to hold the cue ball here. Oh, it's done nicely. Very nicely. So funny, I'm thinking, well, he's just, he's perfect. He brings the bridge out. We're, mm -hmm. on, a, we're on a 10 footer. Yeah. And you can see how far his tip is from the cue ball. So this hurts your timing on these strokes when it's that far away. Well, he's going to be okay. He's going to come into a natural two rail angle on the five. Just get the four down. Tip of right hand English here. Or is he going to draw one rail out? Looks like he wants to draw one rail out. Okay. Can't blame him. Hit it pure. He had to feel like that offered a little something extra because he, he definitely doesn't just do uh, no stroke shots for no reason. Right. So. got options here. He could go forward or punch two rails back out, right, Mark? Could even come one yeah. rail up. Yeah. He feels comfortable the two rails back. You know, Most actually. rotation players do. <laughs> got a little straighter than you really wanted, though. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think he wanted this at all. I think he wanted something where he could either, one, either side would have been fine. Fully agree. He made that stroke motion with his hand, kind of like maybe let up a little bit, wanted to pinch it a little bit more. Well, there's that stroke again. I think this is good. Mm hmm. To tie it up. Five apiece. High quality break and run out there to tie the match. I love it. <laughs> That's the second one of the match thus far. Shane Van Boning, 40 years old. First year he's eligible for the Hall of Fame and almost a certain first ballot Hall of Famer. Well, it's not even almost. It's a, for certain. 
first ballot Hall of Famer. You don't even have to vote. If it's not unanimous, something's wrong. 100%. <laughs> Up until now, he would have been in by now, but he wasn't old enough. Wasn't old enough. Now, me, I'm old enough, but I don't have the credentials. <laughs> you know, so we always had that same deal. We each had something missing here. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. SVB. He has found recent success here, Corteza, on the break. Boy, he'd love to retaliate with a quality break and run out here. Take some of the momentum out of these last couple of racks. Oh, that's a square hit. The nine's going to okay. fall. Okay. Look at this layout. And you called it, Mark. Does the two dress up? It does. So he's got an opportunity to break and run. The three to the four could be a little tricky. The four to the five. He's got some work to do. And he's got that. I know it looks easy, but he's mm -hmm. kind of got that flat, funny angle on right. one where he's got to draw into a particular area. Might even follow if he's got yeah, the angle. Yeah, I think he Might. can follow. I think it gets you to a bigger position zone if he follows. Yes. Yeah. Oh, he had a much better angle than I saw. And see how he's now, if you draw back, you're kind of narrow on that. Or here he got into the good zone. Well, it all depended on the angle, correct? Right, yeah, but I'm saying the angle, you know, by, sure. based on that he was able to get out here, suggests. Absolutely. Backwards was not much narrower. Now where do you go to the three? I think just two cushions out to the center of the table, don't you? The, I don't think he tried to get cute and do anything else. But he's drawing. Yeah, he's going yeah. around it. I, I was wondering, because of the five, I didn't know that he had enough angle to just or too straight to come two cushions out. I think he turned out okay, Mark. He did, but when it's one more rotation, then he's not okay. You know, And so we know that's not exactly where he wanted to be. I think he overcooked that a little bit, to be he, honest with you. By, by some distance. I, I do agree he was playing that, I would assume, in the corner. You know, and if he went too far, he had the side as an option, which is what turned out to happen. Right. But he got a little punchy, got that little quickness on that. He didn't like it either, going backwards. So. No, he didn't. I think your shot was actually the right shot going forward somewhere out, even in the center of the table if you have to. That was a good judgment. Short side. Did you know Sailor? Did you ever know him? I've heard. Oh, okay. Yes. The Sailor, he always talked about the importance of center of the table, and he says, whenever you're in doubt, Mom says, go to the center of the table. Well, it makes <laughs> sense. And, I, you know, there's an art to, the, as you well know, there's an art to the bar table as well. And people that play bar table do not play nine-foot position. Center table is the best move. Nice hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good. Good recovery series there. Jeremy said it best. When you make a bad shot, you have to be willing to work two shots to get back in line. You don't have to get it all back on. You don't have to hit a home run. And so that mean, what he was saying is take on a little bit more difficulty two shots. Don't try to hit a perfect shot to make up for your bad first shot. You know, so it was kind of interesting the way he said it. And it had to do with your disciplined work part of it rather than coasting and try to just get in there where it's just coasting. No, 100% Mark, and something I've heard him say numerous times is don't stress or overstress on position, right? If you don't get right where you want to be, don't overstress on the position. And we all tend to want to overstress on the position. If you get a little bit out of line, take it easy, right? Don't, yeah. Don't overstress on it. Yeah. It's easy to do, but Jeremy is so good at uh, delivering that message. And there's that arm movement, but he just seems to get away with it over and over because of his ability and millions of hours playing. And he is making short work of this rack, Mark. So I believe he listened to you <laughs> early it, on. It was definitely good execution because he had some work to do with this rack. This would be a nice time for his first break and run out of the set. That's for sure. I'm sure he'd be delighted to get this 10 ball in. 6-5 is our score. Cortez in front. Break and run from 
The TPA is rising. I know, it always amazes me. If these guys knew how tough this table was and they never get to play on it, and then they just step up there, sometimes they make it look like a nine-footer almost. This. And truly, the ten-footer, if you're on angle, it's not too bad. But you get a hint off angle, it will extract the toll in a hurry. It sure will, and I give it a ton of respect. It, it looks so easy from my standpoint, but boy, it's not. And, and to your point, their transition from the nine-footer to this table, listen, it's not easy. It's fascinating that these guys can do it because they're not playing on ten-footers anywhere else. No, it's only once or twice a year they even see one. He needs the five to drop. It did not. He has come up dry. And I believe this Banks, I think he can stay somewhere out in the center of the table. He's got cover with the six and three. Um, this could be trouble for SVB. You don't think it's pretty thin on that bank where the cue ball gets hot? Well, I think he not. can hit it with a heavy ball with a little bit of spin to turn it back. But I don't know if he understands that real well. I don't know if it's there. Maybe it's not there. I think you can cut the two from... Pretty down table. I mean, even somewhere around the nine, you could probably make the two. It looks like he's banking it. Yeah. Well, he's decided to come around. Okay. He warped it. Yeah. Well, he made the decision that I'm not going to be able to hold it easily. I can make the bank easier with pace, you know. So yeah. I'm going to take my chances here because that two, if I can get around the table, I can run this rack. And his player preference, I think the bank was a very high percentage, right? Mm-hmm. So if he thinks he can negate that traffic he's good to go and he is good to go seven and eight could pose a problem down the road but for now he's on the three and a good job he got close to the three where he can bend that around the six here and get out to the center of the table without having to go two cushions i believe maybe not might be a little bit thin yeah, and if he does have to go two cushions, he's got to contest with the Maroon 7. Oh, yeah. No problem. Made it look easy. Now, this is kind of a weird one here. Do you stun on top of the 9 and come across and take the thinner cut, or do you try to go between the 9 and the 10? If you do, you want to air towards the nine ball if you're going in between them. You don't want to bump that ten forward. I think he goes above him. Okay. Oh, yeah, he yeah, had much more control than I was thinking here. From the overhead, these angles are different than those angles. Sure. Yeah, he comfortably got there. He does need an angle on the six, though, to get to the seven. And he needs to continue that, right? You don't want to fall flat on any of these mm -mm. balls. Mm -mm. And this is okay. Might have to play this. a little funny. Yeah, he may have to go back to the corner and come around to 10, back up. And then that's when you risk falling flat on the 7. Or maybe you can just go topspin and come across and play the 7 to the far corner pocket rather than the nearest corner pocket. Yeah, I was wondering if that was available. I think that's available. He might be able to come to the top side of the seven. Let's see what he chooses. Oh, yeah, he can. How's his speed? He needs the speed to be just right. It's not too bad. It's not perfect, but not too bad. And that's playable. So now this is kind of interesting. This is two cushions. He, he wants to come back behind. I don't know if we can grab the overhead real quick. If we can, it's this shot where you pocket the ball here and here and back to here is what you're looking for. Correct. And he doesn't want to... End up elevated over the nine, but he's got a good touch for this shot. Notice that touch. He's got he doesn't a want really that good touch. He's okay. perfect. Yeah, good. Man, he seems to have a good touch for those thin cuts where he has to hold that cue ball two rails like that. What a great hit that was. Leave hand really coming with it under the gun mm -hmm. these last two games. Yeah, he's getting stronger. It sends a message to Captain America for sure. Plus, it'll be Lee Van's break after this. He's earning it. 
901 TPA at the moment. And that will change. So now uh, dry break by Van Boning and Lee Van ran out. Plus he previously broken ran out. So he's been at the table for 20 balls. And after losing a couple games in a row. Yeah, and it's a great point, though, Mark, because you don't really expect it after a bunch of scratchy games like they've had, right? You're thinking, well, if you okay if I make a mistake or this happens, I'm going to get back to the table. Well, <laughs> lo and behold, Lee Van has put it on him. He's held control for quite some time now. And Shane feeling it. But Shane, never count him out. Mm -mm. No, these are two warriors. This is a great battle, great race. Lee Van's timing on the break has gotten better. The eight and nine of the balls they're trying to make most often, but the four wheelers are starting to come around. The six ball and the nine ball found the mark. Seeing to get the shot on the one. Oh, it's going to open up. Oh, whoa. Look Shane's, at this. Uh, Shane's body language will not be good looking at this, that's for sure. And it's not good. Yeah. He's looking at his team, his camp, Mr. John Mars, another great man for pool, good friend of mine. But look at this break. He did catch it a little off center, but he did get the one, excuse me, the nine down and the one dressed up beautifully. Look at these balls. Mm -hmm. The four might be the only concern at the moment besides the 10 footer itself. Nothing makes a great player feel better than to see an open layout like this. But you couldn't find the combination if you wanted to. You know, with just everything, you don't have to break anything out. You just have to stay on uh, online here. Yeah, no doubt. But these are the ones you have to take advantage of. Does he go above or below? I like this play, Mark. Yeah, now he can come around the six, two cushions, hit the third cushion behind the six, drop down on the four. Now, he, he wouldn't have minded even if it was a little bit thinner. I think he can get there okay, but you do have to widen it out here to make sure you don't nick that eight. Yeah, that's a great point. He would have liked to have been a little thinner. He's going to have to punch this a fraction. Good. Got Nicely perfect. done. Okay. Oh. Perfect speed. He is dialed in. You just get that sense that there's no mistake coming. Mm-hmm. There's some concentration there. I think he might go up. Is he going to go forward? Okay, then he's going to come out across. Nope. Oh, he's able to short side this. If he would have tried to come across, he probably would have got into the seven there, and it would have been a problem. So by going the super soft speed, it allowed him to make sure he got on the five in this corner. He'd like to end up somewhere straight on the seven, so he needs an angle on the six. He's got it. The problem is the distance of this table. If he ends up straight on the seven, can he reach it? Well... He's in that funny spot, No, he's got to get the bridge. There's no way he reaches this. Not <laughs> only that, he's got a little bit Oof. of a funny angle, like where he's coming almost back at the eight. Oh, no. What's he's, happening he's, here? He's going to do it without it. Okay, short side. Yeah, definitely short side, but a lot steeper than he'd liked. But he is good at this shot. He's really good at these thin cuts with center ball. Looks like he might be drawing this around three rails, and he has. Hit that good. Watch the side pocket. He's going to be clear. Yeah, a little tester here. It's a big shot. No, it really is. For an 8-5 to five lead, or for Shane to get within one, he knows he's got to get this down. I'm 
betting on him. I guarantee you he gets this down. He just seems good right now. Stayed pretty smooth. He did. So that's like 30 balls in a row now for Lee Van. Uh, it was, I think it was tied, and uh, Lee Van, I said he needs to break the run and he out. He did. It was five apiece. Yep, and then Shane broke dry, he ran out, and now he broke and ran out again. Yes. So. Pretty big barrage Cortez has put on SVB. The response shall be interesting. He needs to get a ball down here. And through no fall of Shane's, I mean, the one thing he did, he broke dry uh, once. That's correct. And balls went everywhere, but uh, put to the pocket. Cortez at 9.16, SVB at 8.71 on a 10-footer. That's not bad, especially with some of the games they've had. We got the crusher tuned in back in Fairview Heights. <laughs> he's texted in that he's having a great time watching this match. Oh, Welcome aboard, crusher. That's great. Love it. He's made great contact. Oh. He has got the five down. and oh. Got kiss back down table of the cue ball. One ball didn't stay up but where he has a shot. Well, I guess he has a thin cut, if, <laughs> if that's fun. Yeah, he's not in love with it, and you can't blame him. You Seems. can't control the cue ball. You just have to kind of suffer, whatever. Yeah, and he's kind of terrible kiss from the three. It sent the cue ball back down table. It's kind of been the storyline mm -hmm. early on, and it's seemed contagious and held strong. He's got to fight through it if he wants to win this match. He's never had a chance to get a grip where he could really dig in and play the SVB wide open offense, fast break, here we go. It's like just every shot is awkward. I mean, you he didn't try to out. force it. He didn't try to force anything. It's such a great shot. You've pointed that out, especially with the distance he deals with. He controls the object ball and the cue ball at the same time as good as anybody to ever live. Mm -hmm. Now that quality execution, you can't beat that. When you can hit that object ball accurately, then your ball speeds are good and your confidence goes up. But this guy kicks great. <laughs> Fantastic hit. Even if he leaves a shot, oh, fantastic yeah, hit. He had a chance. No doubt. And I wouldn't be upset with this anyway. I mean, it's it's a lot of distance. He looks to be fairly straight. He's going to have to earn it. See, he's going forward here. Big time shot. Yeah. Boy, I felt like he was asking a lot there. Well, could have turned out worse, that's for sure. Do you chip the one and come back behind the two and use the eight and seven as blockers on the one, or do you go the other way? So he's calling the one and the... Well, you don't have to call it, but he's, he's just indicating he's going to okay. play the bank. It's like a bank safe is what he's really playing, I think. Yeah, I think... I, I'm like you. I'd rather just chip it and make right. sure I get the safe. Okay, oh, that's okay. what he's done. Yeah. Maybe he just... He just had to convince himself that's the right <laughs> shot. <Yeah. laughs> we knew it was the right shot. Exactly. He just had to take a moment and convince himself that was the right thing. There we go. <laughs> he's done okay with it. I think he could have done a little better, though, right? He could have gotten mm. below the two and really cut Shane off. Or hit the one a little bit less speed and make sure. Now Shane might be able to kick in behind this. Oh, and he definitely can, Mark. Might be able to hit it going in. Oh, he could. Look outside. Look out. Oh, golly. I believe he's got the cap. Anything but the point. You know, anything it, but the if point. If he just gets past there. <laughs> Obviously, a scratch is no good. But anything either way, like Mark said, he's caught the gap. In the story of the match, but you can't discredit Lee Van. He's played solid the entire time. He might be going in. No, he was able to get by the eight. I thought he might just go into the eight and leave the cue ball there and just hold it, but he was able to get by there, no problem. So. 
comfortably by there. So that's how this match has gone. If it goes to anything but the point, anything. Yeah. Like, he's at least decent, you know, if not great. But it's the one spot that's just hideous. Like this to carry a little bit. This is his bread and butter. Oh, and to leave Ann's credit, I mean, he's just taking advantage of every little gap. I mean, whatever come his way, he's made the most of it. 100%. He's played, he's played absolutely solid. He made 30 balls in a row coming into this rack, and now he's back shooting. Shane did make a ball in the break. But played a good safety, too. I mean, you just can't fault Shane's game. I'd like to draw this slightly below the four if he can. I don't know if he's going to get below it, and that's the motion that he wanted. He's a little above the four, meaning he's going to go to the bottom long rail. I don't know if he rolls forward, Mark, and takes the cut, or does he warp it around? Can he get past the eight? Is it worth it, or do you take the distance? Uh, I think take what you have here. I agree. I, I don't agree. I, do agree. I, I don't think that he's going to do that, but I'm just saying I, I think he should. I think... Okay, no, he could get a lot out of that. That's what, okay, this is distance. That's what we want. Yeah, that's not bad. He was, he had, he was a lot more straight than it looked. He didn't have to overhit it like we feared that right. he was going to try to do. So he was able to get this pretty comfortably. Wow, this will be a dagger. Oh, yeah. To SVB. The six ball, this is kind of the big ball here. Watch the cue ball. Mm. Well, once again. He's okay. I'm not saying he's going to have to travel the cue ball, it looks like, but he's okay. He's comfortably going to be able to pocket this ball. Yeah, and I think it's actually, it might be perfect where he can even miss the eight and just come back out, but he might have to come around like you said, Mark. I think it lays pretty natural, okay. though. Okay, he feels comfortable to get around the eight, so. Yeah. Oh, oh he's he caught rubbed a piece eight. of it. <laughs> that's, a, that's kind of the difference of how you hit the pocket or the speed that you choose. You can nick it or you can get by it. Then it all looks the same shot to the viewer. So. And to the player, I think even he knew that if he did catch the eight, it was going to be minor. Well, this is a high-quality performance we're seeing right here because Shane really has not played bad. No, there's no doubt. 924. And at one point, I think they were in the upper 700s. Pretty impressive. And to Shane's credit, uh, his TPA doesn't reflect how well he's played. He's made a ton of tough safeties here. And every time it gets scrappy like that, Lee Van gets the first shot and captures it. That's Absolutely. I think, I think SVB's won one game in those scrappy games. Out of all them great shots he's made and great safeties and good touch, but... Credit to Lee Van, right? We, yeah. We're both giving it to him. He's kicked amazing. He's fought amazing. And mid to late match, he's caught a gear. He's playing excellent. And there's a lot of those intermediate shots he hasn't faltered on. They're easy to falter on. You know, he's just oh, stayed no tough, doubt. tough, tough. Yes. Hit the heart of the pocket. His ball speed's been great. I mean, all the credit in the world to Lee Van because Shane has actually put a pretty good match on him. Just the balls wouldn't cooperate. And there will be days like that, right? Yep. You, there's never, you hold your head high. If you gave 100% and you felt like you made all good strokes, the wins will take care of themselves. Yeah, and you, there will be some ugly matches that happen. That happens. But but you can't go to your room and be disappointed in no. yourself. He, he he knows that. But it's not over yet, okay? At it, all. It, it's far from over. You never know. Uh-oh. This is not the way to start things off. Anything but scratching on the break. Let Big Hoss get going here where he gets a little momentum, and now he comes behind it with a breaking run. And he knows how to play from behind, as most of us know, right? He really can loosen up. He's got nothing to lose, and that's really how you need to play when you're behind. You've got nothing to lose. Take that pressure off of you. Loosen up a little bit. Does the two pass the three? Don't think so. Hmm. <laughs> It doesn't yeah. look like it there anyway, Mark, right. but maybe it does. Our overhead, if you're, we're looking on the camera, it's oftentimes deceptive. So we'll have to, if he goes at it, then it must go by there. I think it does. 
but not easily. I'm not saying it's not a, there's certainly in the perimeter of your eye, you have, that three is annoying. I think you're right, though. Otherwise, he would, I think he would be doing something different with the cue ball positioning here. Well. It doesn't. It He's trying to go. do something different. Yeah. He might even be able, what the heck, was he going for the 210? <laughs> no, I think maybe the, the I think he might have been thinking about 210. And maybe he was thinking the 210, and if he goes long, he's got the corner. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, well, he's missed it. You can tell immediately. That's the toll of all those safeties and long tough, and then, uh, well, anything. You can miss yeah, it at any time, but I'm sure. just saying, those little body blows, and if there's a flicker in your concentration, or you blink at the wrong time, that's what it looks like. Absolutely, not to mention the three racks that Lee Vance just pounded him with, and actually four racks that he's just pounded him with. It was five to five, and the next thing SVB knows, he's down nine to five. Got a long, tough two, oh. and look at this. Well, okay, a scratch on the break, and now open miss from place that he has not missed from the entirety of the match. I just don't sense a lot of positive energy from Shane at the moment. Well, he comes around with it. I think if he gets out here, you're going to send some positive energy. Yeah, Are you he's looking at 5'10 here? Is that what we're doing? 3, 4, 5, 10? Well, he's got to do something, and I think that that's going to be the play, especially with the way these lay. Yeah, you have to make a combination on the eight. You might as well make it on the ten, right? Yeah, and he could use the mm. six to stay. Well, he's not going to there. He's just going naked. He's yeah, just going to just make go this out. ball. Unless the five goes by the ten now. That very well may be. I could be. Yeah. It, and five it does. does go. It, it does go. Yes. What am I saying? Well, it's tough for us. We're, <laughs> we are yes. 30, 40 feet from the yeah. table. And if you can go five straight into the, don't even think about the ten ball. That was not going to be easy ever. And this is actually better for Shane. He gets to loosen up. Mm -hmm. Watch the balls go in. He's overcut that a fraction. Mm -hmm. It's going to be okay, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't forget that, though. You do know you didn't hit it the way you wanted to. And one poor position shot leads to another. He is thin here. It's going to be okay, I believe, obviously, but it could lead to a miss. Well, he's got it down. Nice Good and clean. Shot. Nice and clean. Nine six. <laughs> All right, Captain America. Time to rock and roll here. The crowd likes it. They want to see more pool. I think you and I want to see more oh, pool. Yeah. It's bit, for some reason, like you say, the, the score really doesn't reflect what's going on in this match. It seems like it's much closer to mm -hmm. me with with the play out of both players. Uh, really, th this last miss on the two right. ball by both of these guys were uncharacteristic. Didn't expect that. That's the only ball I remember that I was really shocked that right. Lee Van missed. I, right. mean, that, I, I kind of even gave up on it. And then I saw it on the table. I was like, what happened here? I was looking at the cue ball. I expect a big break here. 7-8, the balls he's most likely to make. The 6-3 and three are on the corners. No. 7 balls short. 8 still on the table. Dry break, open layout. Oof. Sometimes you've got to wonder if he hits them too hard. Yeah, he's got three, six balls on this end of the table. But when he's going good, he's making two or three balls and getting the shot too. So, But I guess that just comes with it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's all in his timing, though. He, he's he got so much power that it, it's got to be easy to unharness at times. Can leave and seal the deal. Sometimes that last game is hard to get. I'm definitely not rooting against him. 
pretty unbiased in this situation. But you can sense a little bit of pressure. He's taking a little more time. Obviously, that last game, like I said, is always the toughest to seem to get. A little bit of work to do. Going into the eight, that's okay. It was intentional. But now he's got a little more work to do. He can come between the seven and eight. He could try and pinch it and swing the cue ball three rails. He would have to overcut the three a fraction to get the movement on the cue ball. I think that's a little risky. He might even come back and forth. But coming between the seven, oh, he caught it thick and took the cut. This is his bread and butter, Mark. Mm -hmm. He likes this shot. He's always liked this shot. Comes across to play the five in the side where the six is lying, I think, because it's thinner and it allows him to kind of stroke through the ball rather than try to feather that up to the pocket. Perfect. Yeah, he's hit it well. Really well. Now he's got that hint of an angle. So he's going to have to make a decision here. Do I want to try to go down between the 7 and 8 with the cue ball? Do I want to try to hold it up there? Does just he have that ahead? much angle, Mark? Maybe not. Maybe he is better than I thought. Yeah, he can just roll ahead soft. Just take this. He just doesn't seem to have any problems leaving himself this shot. He's very comfortable. Pretty natural here. This is the ball. Nicely done. Yeah, the story tonight has been Lee Van has just not made very many unforced errors. He's, once he got in line, it's like a boa constrictor. He just keeps wrapping around you. Just make it, make it, get in line, stay in line, run out. Correct, and no matter what Shane did to him, right, he kept him covered up early on over and over, and Corteza just continued to kick his way out of trouble. <laughs> He's laughing. He got straight here. Would you have it any other way? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that is a big deal, right, on, mm -hmm. the, on this table. It's not like you're straight in on a nine-foot. So if he really is straight in, and it four and a quarter-inch pockets... Is he going to go to the side rail and take the cut on the nine? Or just draw back to where it's at now and just play it from down table. Yeah, he feels comfortable. He must have a little pocket to work with. Jeez. Okay. He wants to come off this Oof. rail. Oof. This is not fun. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. <laughs> no, not for, the, not for the win it's not fun. It'll be fun if he gets this down. He might have to put a pinch of inside on this. I guess he can level out. Missable. Nicely done. Good speed there. Well, match ball. Yeah, and he's earned it, Mark. It's been a pleasure. Thank you to AccuStats, and thank you for everybody that's tuned in. Okay, Lee Van Corteza will be back. Gets this match closer. <laughs> I'm telling you, he is a tough man in this 10-foot table tournament. Yes, he is. He's a warrior. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for having me. Thank you, AccuStats, and thank you, everybody who tuned in. On behalf of AccuStats, Scott Frost and myself, we want to thank everybody else for sharing their time with us today. Please join us again. So long for just a while.